is that implement the randomized set class so what this this class means this class means that you will have a randomized set initialize the randomized set object so just imagine that you have an object which you will in initialize you have these three operations first operation is bool insert the value inserts an item val into the set if not present again okay. so basically it's actually as name as a set so for sure my insertion will have this means in insertion of this value val in my set will ha have always unique values because i am only inserting when it is not present returns true if the item was not present false otherwise right okay uh, next operation is bool remove interval which means it removes an item val from the set if present returns true if the item was present false otherwise so simply it will just remove the element val from the set if it is present random returns a random element from the current set of elements and it is guaranteed that at least one element exists so basically we have to return a random element now let's imagine with the example so let's imagine that we have initially again it's a set so make sure that you will always have unique elements so my set in the beginning had elements 1 5 6 7 and 9 I try to insert it a value 2. So, okay, my value 2 is inserted. Now, my set became 1, 5, 6, 2, 7, and 9. Now, with my next operation, let's say I tried to remove the value 5. So, okay, I can easily remove the value 5. Okay, I'll remove this value 5. And now, my set will become a 1, 6, 2, 7, and 9. Now, I ask you to get the random value from it. So, random value which means every element should have equal probability of coming in i cannot just say okay pick the first value the last value no every value should have the equal probability so i should have i should use the randomized thing that to actually get the random value out of it now now as you can easily see it's a set now the very obvious fact which can come to your mind is bhaiya i know that okay this is a set and i'm inserting and removing some element so what i can do is i can use a unordered set so what you could have done is you can have used an unordered set as a let's say s and then you could have used that as a data structure to insert your element val into your set so that can be done in O of one time and this is what the problem was saying do everything in average of O of one time complexity so you what you will be able to achieve that insertion operation via set okay remove again remove operation from a set is also again an O of one time but if i ask you get the random value in the entire set then how will you get it because in a set it is a kind of a tree like structure right so for sure to actually get the value you will to actually get the random value you will have to iterate on all the values get that value in a data structure and then get a random value out of it which will take a o of n time so for sure i cannot use set just to get the random value so because of this my set as a data structure is gone out of the picture now let's see what else we can use so let's say other than a simple set as we know this was the this was the bottleneck for us so for this we know simply that we have to convert that to an array right and then get the like get all the elements in the array and then convert that and get the random index and then we can generate the random value so rather if we convert to array why not can't we simply use an array instead so we can simply use an array and for the folks who don't know how to generate the random index a quick glance for them is that if i have a nums array which i in which i have n elements and you will see indexing indexing are from 0 to n minus 1 so i know that there is a rand function or basically in different languages we have a different name for this function but this random function generates any random value generates any random value in the entire scope of numbers if i do a mod n so whatsoever random value is generated will bound will be bounded by in the range of 0 to n minus 1 and if this range is bounded i know that can be an index range so i can just go and point to a random index because of this value this will give me a random index and with this random index i can just acquire any random value from my nums array and that's how i can simply get a random value from the random index and this random index is nothing but rand number modulus by n modulus by n is just to restrict the index range so now we have got to know that simply to actually get to actually get the rand value which means random value we can just simply do a rand modulus the array size so this will give me a random index and random index 
if I ask my array with the random index, he will give me a random value. As simple as that. So for sure, an array will work in over fun time because rand will work in over fun time. Mod n operation also works in over fun time. So for sure, this accessing also works in over fun time. So this entire thing to get the random value will work in over one time. Okay, and also to push an element in the array will actually also take over one time because if you know an array have these elements if i just push back some element in the array it will again take over one time but if i ask you that you have to remove an element from the array then this is not an over one time operation because if you had remembered in your very beginning if i had elements like this so if i just ask you to remove an element 5 so what you have to do is okay you will remove this element 5 but then you will have to shift all the elements to the left side of the array right now bhaiya why can't i simply leave it empty okay i will just simply leave it empty but if you leave it empty and then you will just go and apply this rand function then your size is still n so rand function can give you this index also if it gives you this index, then you are in a dilemma where you will actually go and what if will you actually try to access next and same, let's say if next time this nine is also removed, then you will have these two empty places. Now what? So basically that is the reason you will have to have to shift, which means all the elements should be on one side only. So now this is the bottleneck for us. Sorry, this is the bottleneck for us that the remove operation I cannot do for an array. Now let's see if we can actually do this or not. So if we look back, so what was done? Okay, our main our main aim is to figure out if any way I can do the remove operation also in of one time, then I am done. I am super great. So and for sure, I I will do it via arrays only because I know that the random operation will be done via arrays only. Now. I just thought, okay, if I look back at the, my main example, which we which we saw here itself, the main example. So we saw that, okay, we had an element array one, five, six, seven, nine. When we inserted number two, so in the end it got inserted. So simply a pushback of the new value coming in. Let's say name it as a value because you saw I'm inserting these as a values. So new value was coming in. So I inserted that new value itself. Now, when came the time of this removal of any number? So he can ask me to remove any number, not necessarily the end number. So he asked me to remove the number five. Now I have to remove it. But as we saw here that we we will have to shift all the elements to the left because we have to maintain the shrink size right so i know that okay i will have to shift all the elements to the left which means it should look like okay six should go here seven nine and two so it should look something like this so my main task is five should go my size should shrink to actually the limited size only and all the remaining elements must be like this. But now my question is that do we actually require the shifting operation? See why ultimately why I am asking you why why can't I just do okay just uh, remove this element and uh, like put any other element of the array here and let's say remove this and put a two and let's say now just now this remove the last element. Let's say I just offer something like this now we will have to know if we can if we want to shrink this or not depending upon what is the next operation which we can actually apply so we got to know okay shrinking okay it's good but the shifting operation will not be required because we got to know that ultimately i am just required to get a random value out of all these values so even if i have a six here or a two here it doesn't matter it just be that all the elements all the remaining elements should be in this range no matter what the position is if here is a six or a two or a six no matter what the position of the element is it just be in this range only that is the ultimate aim because i am generating a random index and from that i am getting a random value so for me for me the element order it doesn't matter it's just that from the range of zero to the shrink size shrink size this should be the range for me to actually get the elements that's it so what i'll do is instead is that what i know i have to remove this value and i know the best operation i can easily access the last element of the vector or of the array in just over one time so i'll get this last vector get this last element i'll simply swap it with my this 
element which I am about to remove. So I'll simply remove this element. So now before removing, you have to check. You have to just simply say now my two will come here, right? So now to remove to remove this element, you will need to know okay this element because he will say value as five. And you know that the array contains only unique numbers. So you need to go and check back, bro. What is the index of five? Because at the index of five, my last element will be coming in. So to keep the track of the index of the value, I will keep an index map. So we got to know, okay, we will need to have one more data structure called as the index map, which will keep track of the index of the values. So with this, index map i will be i will maintain this index map and with this index map i will be able to access the index of this value okay i've got the index index is one now my task is that my last element which is last element last element is simply nothing but my nums dot back nums dot back which is the simple last element of my vector now is it should come on to my location as one so if it will come at the location one i'll simply know one thing that uh, my index map now for sure if this will come to location one so i have to update its index map and also basically it should look something like this right so if i look at the final location i know that the index map of this value two has become one and nums of this index one has a value two so i have to update these two values right so i'll simply say index map of the last element which was a two will actually become the index map of five because index map of five was storing a one so you will see it is nothing but index map of two is actually equal to one and which is same index map of two is actually equal to one and same we will do that okay i have to also update my nums because this is the main vector which actually has the element index map is showing only the indexes which i have updated but what about updating the actual nums? Okay, simply update the actual nums by saying what is the index of the last element? Okay, now the last element will actually be placed at the index wherever it is there. So index of the last element is actually one as we have placed here right now above and last element I'll simply place it was a two. So I'll simply place that at this location one. So now what this what with this what happened is two has come here, but still five, five, five has just gone out right now i have not put a 5 here although in the picture i am i have shown i have put a 5 but i have not placed any operation such that 5 i put in here because it is not even required because i know in the next step whatsoever is here will actually be removed so even if i place a 5 here now and then i remove it it's of no sense i can simply remove it now also so what happened was i placed a 2 at this location the 2 is still here but 5 should have come here but rather what i, what I did was I know that five will come and then I will remove this last last column, basically last index or basically last value. So I just simply removed it now only. So what I did was I just simply did a pop back. Pop back will simply remove this specific value, which was the last value, which means this last cell from the entire vector will actually go away. And I also know that my index five should no more like because value five is no more there in my entire vector right so this should also be no more there so i just said that index map dot erase this specific value 5 so with this my 5 value got erased out of the index map and the last cell from the vector has gone out of this specific nums vector now my ultimate vector has become like this and simply now i can simply get and i know my size my size has shrinked i can simply go and check for any random value because i can generate any random index in this range which is the shrinked range so now simply if we just look at the code what how the code will look like they if you remember that it just says that remove an element value from the set if present return true if the item was present false otherwise so i'll simply say firstly i am asking my uh, function to remove this value and he says that if the item is not present then we have to return a false so i'll just ask my index map because index map is storing the indexes for all the elements present in my actual nums so for sure this has index map has the identity of all the elements present in my nums so i'll simply go and ask my index map if index map is not even having the value which means if the index map is actually equal to end which means it is not even having a value which means for sure that specific value is not even present in my nums 
so i'll simply return a false from here itself now if not then as we saw above that firstly we'll grab the last element as you saw i'll just shrink it down uh, firstly we'll grab the last element then we know okay we have grabbed the last element then we have to grab the index of the value okay we grabbed the index of the value we grab the index of the value then we assign that index of the value to the index of the index map of the last element okay i assign the index map of the value i assign that to my last element that is done then again i have to update my nums also so nums of index map of the last value which is the updated index which i have right now just above i'll assign this to my last so same index map which is this index which I, have, which I have updated right now will be updated with the actual last value now this portion is done so now my main task is one again operation you could have done was assign your five to last value and then remove the last value but here i know that the last value is simply going to be removed so i just simply skipped that and i simply removed my last value from my nums and then as you remembered you have to also erase the existence of value from your map because you know that you will check the index map to know the existence of any value here is if it is there or not and ultimately you simply return a true as it was saying return a true now okay remove operation is done other operation is simple because you know that addition operation in an array because you know that now you will not use a set you will only use an array so now you know that okay addition operation in an array is just a pushback so if an insert of two insert of this value is coming in simply push back this value in my nums and for sure update the index map also index map of the incoming element too because you know that okay now earlier the array was of size 5 array was of size 5 now after the pushback array has become of size 6 so nums has done a pushback of this value so i need to also populate the index map index map stores the new index as i know that this was inserted at the last index so the two's index will be size minus one so i'll just say num so size minus one is the index of the element two and that's how my new index is populated again if we look at the function it's again simple that it just says that it returns true if the item was not present and false otherwise so if the item was not present which means if the item was present so i'll simply say okay if the item was present i'll simply say return the false if not if not if the item is not present then i'll simply push back that specific value i'll update this index map as we showed above these two operations we showed above and then we can simply return a true this is the insert operation and also these are the three operations which we wanted because the random operation will actually remain as it is this was the random operation which we wanted now clubbing in the code again this is exact same code just the initialization we will have the empty vector as nums we will have the index map to store the indexes of all the elements of nums and this randomized set is the constructor which we have given in the question this is the insert function which we saw above this is the remove function which we saw above and this is the random function which we saw above and the time of every operation is o of one and space is o of n because we are using an index map and that will take o of n time to just store n elements so basically we have n operations in worst case that's all i hope that you guys see you bye bye